When it comes to being cute, almost nothing beats a baby bear. Face it, Cameron, be a good girl. Can I have a little kiss? Can I have a little kiss? And the future of this one and many more depend on this remarkable grandmother and her dedicated team. So seeing that little bear mirror, it's really in perspective, doesn't it, a bit? Doesn't it ever. What you're doing. This is what it's all about, this is what we do, and this is why we keep going, and this is why we have to raise awareness and keep the money coming in so we can look after this little girl and others that might have come in later due to poaching. In the wildlife trade, this is what we do. The day before, Mary flew in from Perth. It's her first visit to Phnom Penh in three years. How are you? Lovely to see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. It's been a few years. Oh, oh good, Matt. Really yeah. good. I Hello, Mary. Seen... David. Oh, hi, Dave. Sorry to be filming you when we arrive here, Oh, Mary. I'd have done my hair if I'd have known. Oh, no, you look pretty good to me. <laughs> Although she hasn't been back for a while, Mary is no stranger to Cambodia. So there'll be a few changes to see as well, I hope. Well, this is all new, isn't it? Different to when I first came. It was just a hut with a rat in it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> We're heading to a bear sanctuary she's established. It's about an hour's drive outside the capital. Mary started Free the Bears in 1995, and her work now spans five countries. Nearly 1,000 bears have been saved. Hi, how are you? Ben, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Mary is a legend here, and the new staff are very keen to meet her. What's so special about bears? Why bears? Everyone loves a teddy bear. You've got Rupert Bear, Yogi Bear. Paddington bear. Every child has a bear and to think they're being abused like they are in the wild, it's criminal. Thanks to her tireless fundraising, there have been many improvements at the bear sanctuary. Emma Blint works on the education campaign. She wants to show Mary a new enclosure. This is a viewing area that we've built for school groups and visitors. Right. Just shaded, so right. it's a lot more comfortable. You haven't, this is all new too, Mary? Yes. This is amazing. It'll all grow over. Yeah. So usually with volunteers and visitors, we'll spend maybe about 15, 20 minutes just observing the bears. It's a good moment for me to kind of put a little bit of pressure on about why we're doing this. Matt Hunt is the chief executive of Free the Bears. So the one just under this tree that's just starting to move now, yeah. you'll see with her again she's she's actually lost part of one front paw and um, up to the elbow on the other front paw. When she actually arrived she arrived with her brother and a pair of them had been hogtied to a pole. We thought at one point that Rose might lose three limbs because the ropes had been tied so tightly on her. Before coming to the sanctuary, many of these animals suffered similar trauma. The gentle bears are killed for meat or sold illegally to other countries, including China, where their bile is extracted. The sanctuary is a tribute to Mary's years of hard work. Her campaign began in a remarkably modest way in 1993 with a petition in a Perth shopping centre. I just stood there for about half an hour, not like a stuffed mute. <laughs> I just stood there, not quite sure, knowing I wasn't sure what to do. But the plight of the bears soon struck a chord. It was amazing. I had a queue of people waiting up to sign on this, and one sheet after the other got filled up. And by the time it was one o'clock, I must have had 500 signatures. I was absolutely elated. Public awareness is a key part of the campaign to end the cruelty. This morning, there's a children's education session. The first thing we do, we uh, show the presentation induction. Yes. So they be aware of uh, Free the Bears and what we are doing here. I, uh... It's built around Mary's story 
of campaigning and fundraising. The cruel process of extracting bile from the bears horrified her. The bile is highly prized in Asia for its supposed medical qualities. Mary wants to end the painful practice and other forms of cruelty, but knows this will take time. This is a first step of changing the thought of generations. Of what? Of children's thinking, the way they will learn how not to go out and hunt bears. And they've got so much to learn about their own, their own country and the way the animals are treated. Wow, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? This is the latest project at the Century, a brand new quarantine facility. And there's a surprise coming. Twenty years after she began campaigning, I'm taken by her sheer joy with this little bundle. How was she found? She was actually confiscated from a hunter. Very likely it would have become, yeah, you know, bear paw soup. There you are. Yeah. And a pink little tongue. <laughs> She's... I think this is the smallest one I've ever held, really. Really? Yeah. Guy. Look at the length of their claws. Look already, already. So already. Yeah. And they cut those claws off and use them for soup. Shot the whole paw off while the bear is still alive and use it for braised bear paw soup with onions and garlic. And it sells to the other people that probably about what, $250 a bowl or something would it be? Something really? like that, yeah. For some of these bears, Life has changed dramatically. This one was kept in a cage by a factory owner whose large staff fed it constantly. He, he was uh, 144 kilos, twice the average weight of a male sun bear when he arrived. This is the bear just before it was rescued. The Cambodian authorities and a non-government organisation called the Wildlife Alliance play a big role in the rescues and they're proud of their work. This is how one cub was transported. And here's the illegal trader under arrest. <laughs> Back at the quarantine centre, Mary is understandably proud. This is a state-of-the-art facility using solar energy and recycled water. Absolutely fantastic, really. It's, <laughs> it's mind-boggling. The thought and planning that's gone into this has been incredible. Do you know the first quarantine area there was I saw at Nong <laughs> Bit of dirt, under no trees, an animal of some sort was in the cage, and that was it. And that was the quarantine area, and if the animal was all right when it came in, it certainly wasn't all right when he went out. No, it was, it was sad, it was sad. Okay, quick stuff. All right, see you in a second. Cheers then, bye. Word has just come in that a bear has been located, and Matt Hunt is moving quickly. I, I do know the bear's been handed over, so we're just gonna right. go and, um, pick it up and get it to sanctuary as a cub. The only thing that's been said is um, where we're going to be yeah. it's a private business. Um, right. Please don't film anything that shows anything like that. We're just going to go right in here, now. are we? Yes. Right. I'll hold the camera down a bit. I'll be very best I can be. Well, that's the cage, is it? Okay. Is this the bear you just got? Yeah. Okay. You know? Nev Brodus has more detail. This little cub was found in farmland, uh, which may or may not have previously been forest. Um, and she was brought to Phnom Penh uh, by the, the owner of the farmland. And the owners agreed to donate it to us. Right. Um, she's a bit ill at the moment. She's got a very distended belly. She's basically had the wrong food. Right. Um, and the owner? Which has led to this very swollen belly. That's why I brought him in, did he? Yeah. 
This young one is very lucky to survive. Her mother would never abandon her, so she's probably dead. She's had a painkiller, but right. she needs a bit more medicine just to relieve that gas in the stomach. Now the cub is on its way to a new life. While the tiger war continues, a new equally emotional fight is escalating. At the sanctuary, we sit watching the video that two decades ago started Mary on this long journey. And that's the nub of the problem. It's where she first learnt about the process of bile extraction. Innocent animals continue to suffer and to die. I can see that Mary is still deeply affected by the bear's suffering. What do you think after seeing that when that was happening all those years ago? and what you and your team here have achieved mm. since then. Mm. We've done a little bit, that's for sure, but um, we haven't been able to address the bile farms in Laos yet, but we're working on that one with the government, hoping to change change things gradually. But it's it's hard, it's hard really. Mm, but we... When you say hard, what do you mean? What... Well, you can't just go up to the government and say, look, this is wrong. You can't do that. You have to work with the government and just campaign day after day and tread slowly and softly, hoping one day that they'll realise that um, it's wrong. I mean, these are endangered species and what's going to happen when there aren't any left in the wild? That's the problem. What are they going to do then? This long and very successful campaign by Mary has not been without tragedy. Her son, Simon, was deeply involved in the work as a project director, but disaster struck here in Phnom Penh in 2005. My son, he just um, was hit by a car, just stepped off the curb, wasn't thinking, and um, he, just, he hit his head on the, the car, on the pavement, rushed to hospital, he never came out of his coma, which was <laughs> pretty awful pretty terrible. He keeps me going and the bears kept me going. The bears helped me so much through that time because I had this focus to keep going in my head. I had this focus, I've got to keep going for Simon and the bears and they, the bears need help. And that's exactly what's happening now. A bear is being tranquilized with this blow dart and then taken for a health check. Managing the physical and psychological health of these creatures is a complex task. This bear is about to join a different peer group. Bears are solitary animals in the wild, so keeping them in groups is, is not easy. But you know, over the years we've, we've become quite skilled at it and we can have large groups together now. So he's going to go into a group with uh, two other males. While the bear is asleep, Mary's not about to pass up the opportunity for some fundraising. Yes, we're taking some paw prints. I'll take them back to Perth and we can get them framed. Wow. We're going to get hundreds of dollars for these. And it raises money for the bears. At 75, most people would be putting their feet up. But not this campaign, veteran. Mary, you and I are not getting any younger. What's the future? I suppose I shall still be around until I drop off the perch. I don't know when that's going to be. But all the time I can raise awareness and give talks at schools and clubs and things like I do back in Perth. Um, I suppose I'll keep going and probably one day I might say, I'm too stiff to move, too old to keep breathing, and that'll be that. <laughs> but I can't think that far ahead. I just have to take one day at a time. <laughs>